Hello students, in continuation with my lecture series on DKTU Energy Science and Engineering, my topic going on is Unit 5, Systems and Synthesis. I have already discussed with you climate change, energy scenario, and now I will discuss the various energy storage. This is important. You can be asked a 10 mark question, discuss energy storage in detail. And as I told you earlier also, the more you will write about the current things going on in the market, the higher the marks you will fetch. Because these, uh, this unit is related more to current events more to future of how energy scenario is going on in the world and also please subscribe to my channel in order to get a fully solved model paper by experts four to five days before your final exams thank you energy storage devices are systems which store energy in many forms like electrochemical energy you remember uh, cells uh, they store energy uh, they store charge capacitor store charge and the formula for energy is half q v square half c v square kinetic energy pressure difference potential energy that is when something falls from a higher to a lower field chemical energy stored in cells and batteries. I'm just giving an example. Thermal energy, sun's energy, which is stored in daytime, used at night, fuel cells, batteries, capacitors, flywheels, compressed air, pumped hydro, super magnets, hydrogen, etc. List is unending. So they all help us in storing this energy. Other example you can take is power backup at your place. Okay, so I am just giving you in short, I have made a table for you. Again, I am repeating, this is a theoretical paper. Try expressing your answer more in tabular forms or block diagrams like how I have done. Okay, energy storage with renewable energy plants, solar, solar thermals, thermal or chemical reactants, solar, again, you have many battery cells, etc., which are storing this type of energy, wind, you have studied a lot in unit four, wind turbines, flywheels, battery cells, etc., Ocean ones, OTEC, you have studied in unit four. I have explained you in detail. In case you missed out, you please check my playlist or the previous lectures. They are all sources of energy storage. So in short, I will compile all types of energy storages in this block diagram. See, energy storage can be direct ones like um, uh, magnetic ones can be superconducting magnetic energy storage. Electric ones can be supercapacitors. You must have done experiments in the lab and seen what a capacitor looks like. It is storing charge. It is storing energy. The indirect ones are, first I take the energy from them and then I uh, change the energy and then I go in to utilize it for my daily or basic needs like artificial reservoir, batteries, flywheels, etc. Natural reservoirs can be your hydro pumped hydros, water or compressed air, etc. So the two major types of energy storage ones are the indirect storage and the direct storage. Mechanical energy can be stored in water pumps, like what happens when you switch on a pump at home. It will store energy for the whole day. You utilize it, and when it gets uh, uh, utilized again, you store it. It is a cyclic uh, process. Batteries, cells, etc. Flywheel energy storage works by accelerating a rotor or a flywheel to a very high speed. I have discussed in unit four how it happens, the rotational energy and how it is stored. So they are all uh, the three shapes of energy storage can be how much 
डिमांड इज देयर हाउ मच सप्लाई इज देयर अकॉर्डिंग टू दैट वी विल बी स्टोरिंग देन डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द बैलेंसिंग आई कैन से थर्मल स्टोरेज for hot water used when final energy to be stored is heat due to their high efficiency and comparatively low investment cost they can be used in various applications ranging from balancing high voltage load speaks to decentralized island solutions electrical energy storage pumped hydro or batteries material storage systems like gas storage ones energy conservation the word means to conserve energy so energy conservation is the and it is a topic of uh, current events it is the effort made to reduce the consumption of energy by using less of an energy surplus for example you must have seen when you visit five star hotels etc they write please switch off the light when you go or please switch off uh, before leaving the room do uh, do not use ac if not required all these type of instructions and efforts are done in order to use only that much amount of energy which is required and not to waste uh, it so energy conservation methods in buildings reduce the need for energy surpluses and can result in increased environmental quantity uh, sorry quality national security personal financial security and higher savings the lesser you use the electricity at your residence the lesser will be your electricity bill this is what it is trying to say okay then energy can be transformed from one form to the other many examples of this i have told you in the previous four units like solar energy getting transformed and being used as electric energy mechanical energy of wind turbines is generating electricity so there are examples are unending ways to save energy conservation can be many you write the ones which you are comfortable while writing in your exam like for example uh, purchase energy efficient applicants check before purchasing the rating of that applicants if the rating is less especially of ac fridge etc try to avoid purchasing that application reduce water heating expenses which consumes more energy like geysers even in this i will quote try using less of ac air conditioner in your room because acs are also making your electricity bill go too high try to avoid it as much as possible turn off lights when you are leaving the room it can even be your classroom try to switch off the fans and electricity a light before you leave the room because electricity has been generated by harnessing various sources of energy so this way you are helping in energy conservation and conservation engineers specialize in designs systems and practices that protect the environment and preserve the natural resources they try to bring in more of the principles of sustainability and responsibility to see to it that people do not waste energy energy system engineers try to make it a point to see that wastage of energy is less okay what are the sources of energy conservation you have studied all these headings in your previous units you remember solar energy you have studied it it is a full separate unit in your paper you have studied wind energy quickly i will revise it again with you solar power is using the sun's energy and light to provide 
heat, light, and electricity for homes or daily uses. Photovoltaic systems, I have discussed in detail with you in solar energy. The, uh, by these systems, the electricity could be produced directly from sunlight. Solar hot water, the process to heat hot water, heat water with the help of solar energy, solar panels, etc. Then wind energy is used to generate mechanical power, which in turn generates electricity. Geothermal, geothermal, that means the energy beneath the surface of the earth has been used. It can be spring, it, uh, uh, sorry, hot water spring, steam, etc., which is used to run turbines and then they generate electricity, wave energy, ocean waves, the, uh, the waves move in the form of up and down waves and their pressure difference has been used to generate energy, ocean winds, ocean currents, etc. Water, hydroelectric energy, hydro comes from the word water, another renewable source of energy which is produced from fast flowing water. These sources are pollution free and they help us in generating a large amount of energy and biomass energy which is from we get from the plant and animal waste all this has been discussed in great detail in unit one and unit two now this question has been asked every year what is green energy what are the benefits of green energy? What is the concept of green building architecture? Why? Because this is the most current topic of debate for energy. Everywhere the demand has come up suddenly that even if one office space has to be designed by an engineer, it should fulfill the concept of green building and green architecture to protect our environment and to conserve energy. That is why this topic is so important. So look at it carefully. Green building, green, nature is green, trees are green, natural surroundings are all green. That is why we have used the word green. So a green building is a building that in its design, construction or operation reduces or eliminates the negative impacts. Negative impacts in the sense that suppose earlier design structures did not have uh, MCB panels, which uh, were a very big cause for high electricity bills or they were not having natural sunlight. So whole daylight used to stay on, resulting in high electricity bills. So all this creates positive impact on our climate and natural environment. Suppose I design a building or a house like where I get natural sunlight, then I will use less of my tube light in the house, this will result in less electricity bill. This will result in energy conservation and this will result in positive impact on my climate. If I get a house designed with solar panel, which heats up my water on its own, then I will not use geyser or heater. This will again reduce my electricity bill and again give a positive impact to my environment. So green buildings are trying to preserve the natural resources and help us improve the quality of our life. The main goals of green building are life cycle assessment, energy efficiency, water efficiency, material efficiency. They try to use materials which are compatible with environment, indoor environmental quantity, quality enhancement, very important, especially with corona outbreak. It is a must now for every house that you check to it that you're indoor, you are having oxygen loving plants or not. How much of 
uh, green thing you have incorporated in your architecture, operation and maintenance optimization, waste reduction. So there are many uh, examples you can come across in newspapers, current research journals, et cetera, where they have designed green building, keeping in mind the current scenario being faced by world problems. So green building has major components of energy efficiency and renewable energy water efficiency, environmentally preferable building materials and specifications, especially for civil engineers, waste reduction, toxic reductions like the green buildings and green architecture, they have banned the use of plastics and all while they are making the building itself or while uh, trying to incorporate elements that are going in for making. For the indoor air quality enhancement, they have already put up uh, oxygen loving plants, which are giving oxygen even at night, like aloe vera, tulsi, et cetera, and smart growth and sustainability. Now, this diagram, I will try to explain you in a very short manner. It is looking complicated, but you don't need to fear. Try only to pick out and see what all new things are being getting added to your home so that the electricity bill gets reduced. Let us begin from here. See, photovoltaic solar panel. What is this doing? It is going to capture the sunlight. And at night, this heat can be used for e either heating water or heating uh, anything or using it as a light source. Okay. Low fl uh, flow and dual flush toilets, etc. People you waste a lot of water in their washrooms. So what happens is with the low flow and dual flush toilets, less water is utilized. Then you can look here, high quality insulation and ceiling. What happens is less AC is used when your insulation and ceiling is of high quality. You will not feel too hot in summers inside and too cold in winters inside. So this will reduce the, your usage of air conditioner or heaters. Then see oxygen loving plants, green plants that are there, light colored exterior walls so that not much of sunlight gets trapped. Then alternative energy source, they have also put up a solar panel, rainwater harvesting they have done so that they collect rainwater and they can use that also. Then uh, you can check out Energy Star applications, as I told you, try buying five star energy uh, applications like fridge, air conditioner, etc. Low zero voltage, uh, sorry, low or zero flooring and paint flooring of the building has been done with certain new elements. So this way, just take an idea from this diagram. If you are not able to make it in your final exam, then just pick up the important points from this diagram and try to show that if these things are incorporated while going ahead to design any building, either for residential purpose or commercial purpose, it will be of great help. So green architecture or green design is basically an approach to building that minimizes the harmful effects of construction projects on human health and environment. The green architect or designer attempts to safeguard air, water, and earth by choosing eco-friendly building materials and construction practices. Green architecture is a sustainable method of green building and it tries to take up everything in an eco-friendly manner. Lead ratings, very, very, very important every year a question either in section A or section B or section C has been asked on lead ratings. Lead full form leadership in 
energy and environmental design is an internationally recognized green building certification system providing third party verification that a building or community was designed and built using strategies aimed at improving performance across all the metrics that matter most energy savings water efficiency carbon dioxide emission reduction improved indoor environmental quality and resources and sensitivity to their impact lead basically helps the world in providing a point system to score and check out how much this building being designed by the engineer is following the lead rating criteria like is the site where this setup is being put sustainable is water efficiency being managed is energy and atmosphere uh, considerations being taken into consideration material and resources are they eco friendly and environmental friendly or not and indoor environmental quality has been maintained or not according to that the lead ratings give the specific building a level of certification as silver gold or platinum it is just like your mark sheet you are a topper you are a gold medalist very good so if my building has a like it is having a gold rating that means my building is 100% as per the norms of green building or green architecture if it is silver maybe it is falling short in achieving the green architecture norms by 10 to 15% so lead is just like a type of demarcation for my building as silver gold or platinum now this table has been asked in section a what is the gold level ratings at as per the lead certification so lead you remember like this platinum 80 plus points mark sheet type gold 60 to 79 silver 50 to 59 lead certificate you get like what do you say your pass marks are just i get 40% and i will pass my exam so from there the certificate starts for your building as you start filling the criteria of green building or green architecture your mark sheet rating increases from a good second class through a first class and then a distinction okay integrate the concept of lead ratings i told you this question is asked every year now this must be of 10 marks so first in order to secure 10 marks you will write down the full form of lead what is the full form leadership in energy and environmental design then you will mention the different rating systems for green building green interior green neighborhood green home design lead categories what are they how they give the points if you are not able to remember these marks no problem you just mention them that the innovation and design process location sustainable site water efficiency this is like your mark sheet score has been divided on this basis and accordingly you are getting marks for your building so see lead rating system has these consider major considerations before giving marks to a building water efficiency innovative design process like suppose chimney whether chimney is there in the kitchen or not if chimney is there it will uh, reduce less pollution in the environment location and linkages where is your building exactly located is the site a sustainable site away from environmental damages like cyclone or say an earthquake or anything else energy and atmosphere how much your building is taking care of these two points awareness and education from time to time in your building like 
the, are there proper dustbins kept for wet waste and dry waste or not? Are uh, the uh, uh, common areas where people sit being cleaned on a daily basis, indoor environmental quality, is it being maintained or not? What are the materials and resources being required? So accordingly, you get marks for your building in this manner, the available points and the total possible points. Identification of energy related enterprises that represent the breadth of the industry and prioritizing these as candidates, fossil fuel, nuclear power, renewable energy, traditional energy. Okay, thank you.